Okay guys, looks like we've got some explicit material going on here. So um, children, if you could look away now, that'd be great. Welcome back to MD Fish Tanks guys. I'm MD and these are all my fish tanks. So the topic of conversation for this video is going to be my aquatorium. It's just, it's now about 65 days old, something like that, which you, I don't think you'd believe looking at it because it looks so mature the way it's grown in. It looks really cool, I think. It's been slightly neglected at the moment because I've had quite a lot of other things going on, including this bad boy. Hello. So yeah, hopefully you've all seen the goldfish planted tank now if you haven't i'll click a card i'll click a card no no i'll leave a card all right but yeah i want to make a few changes to the aquatorium i want to show you what has worked what hasn't worked what i think i can improve upon um hopefully you can see the pee puffer tank behind me actually i've just set that one up just escaped that one pee still hiding they were hiding last time any peas available to see peas hey no 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 peas Anyway, let, let me spin you around, give you a closer look. Right then, what has worked? Okay, so I think we can safely say that the system I've put in place for water trickle, I think you can just see through the gap there, zoom in. So the water trickles down the back wall of rock. I made basically like some little waterfalls going from that side and going from that side down. And effectively it wets the little packets. I'll, put, I'll slide up some images of when I set this up because I think it's good to show you guys who haven't seen from the start, how I actually achieved this jungle at the top there. Just a quick message guys, if you do enjoy my channel and you want to support it, then you can click the Patreon up here. Anything you can give will be going towards funding the new studio and future build so that we can just make even better videos for you guys. So go and have a look and maybe buy some merch as well and that's below in below the description. So that's working really well. Probably too well because the issue is, I don't know if you remember all the cushion moss we had down here. Anything that's exposed to the light is still doing well. It'd help if I showed you. I can't really see. There we go. So that's doing well, that, that there. However, if we peel back what's hidden underneath, this stuff underneath has all died. So with that in mind, and the fact that I want to do some changes, I want to take off the cushion moss. Cushion, <laughs> every time I sound like Sean Connery, a cushion moss. Anyway, I want to take off the cushion moss, yeah, so that then I can raise the water level. I want to bring the water level up because at the moment, look, let me stand back so you can see. So there's the there's the total water level. I want to bring the water level up to about here. I can stock it with more fish as well. Then I want to see a lot of schooling behavior because it doesn't take two seconds for these plants to reach the surface. I've got some pots in there as well we need to remove because now I've got some free space in my storage area because I just escaped a couple of tanks. The last video, you guys might have seen me escape this tank. That was a couple of days ago now. Um, it's gone a bit murky, which is absolutely normal for a new no filter setup. So I've had people messaging me asking, oh no, my, fil my no filter tank's gone all murky. This happens, it's just normal. You just have to leave it, let it go through that phase. I've also swapped the light out to that one because it's a lot brighter. And I put the one that was on there onto the Zen tank because, just because, because it fits 
and that one fits. So, you know, you've got to be proactive about these things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the moss and I'm going to start to plug areas with some rocks as well as to where I think the water level is going to come up to because I still don't want Pancho here, the naughty little devil, climbing into the back because if he does go back there, well, I'm not going to see him. Um, he'll probably come to the front again because he knows that's where he's fed. Like pretty much where he sat there is where I always feed him. And in fact, later on in the video, I'll show you some ambush predator feeding because that would be really cool. Well, mate, you're the star of the show. Everyone wants to see. Don't don't get shy. Don't get shy. I don't like these pots. Why why are there pots in my garden? Sorry, mate. I will remove it. Why am I talking like that? <laughs> doing a little story. <laughs> Nuts. Whoa! Look at that female there. That female white, white cloud mountain minnow. Plump as hell. I'm guessing that's with spawn. There's a nice male here, like, there's the male behind that female there, that's the main male. Go on, son. Anyway, right, so let's get some of that moss off. So this is my outdoor store. Yeah, it's not pretty. It's just outside the fish studio. It's not pretty, but it does the job. It's just outdoor stuff that I can't fit in there at the moment. But once we've got the bigger studio, which is planning to be all the way down to the bottom of the garden and across to here, so there's a walkway to the side, but you can imagine the amount of space I'm gonna have different there. Anyway, over to this video today. Uh, this in here is where I keep all my different rocks that I've used. So what I want to do, smash up some of these. These were the rocks that I've used originally, so we want to keep it a similar sort of color. Uh, there's loads in it. Though. I've got like serious stone, more of that. There's pebbles, there's, there's loads of different rocks actually to choose from, but I want to keep it the same. So let's get those smashed up now. So I was going to do like a real arty slow-mo of me smashing this up, and then I realized, well, I'm now risk smashing up the one thing I have. <laughs> to record all of this for you guys. So that won't be happening. So you just have to watch normal smashing. Right, we've got our rocks. Let's get them in the tank. That's that area there blocked. Um, you, you see this strange sort of looking plant here? Well, this apparently is like a dandelion plant and it's obviously came in in the summertime when the dandelion seeds were sort of just flying around. It's come in the studio, landed here and just taken, see those roots in the water there? Excuse my reflection. I don't know, you can't see it. <laughs> those roots just trailing across that front rock in the center there are actually from there. I actually really like it. Some people would say it's a weed, but I love the naturalness that it's that it's found its way in and grown there. I think that's just amazing. So I'm going to relocate it because I want it to be above the water line and that's about where the water line is going to be. So if I just, hopefully you can just pull it up. Um, uh, it feels kind of tough, but it's, it's coming away. It's coming away. There we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Look at that. That's well interesting. So the beauty of that is it kind of means wherever I put it, wherever that may be, not there, but wherever I put it, look, we're going to have roots that actually go into the water level. I'll make it a little bit more hidden that with the roots because they're not the prettiest of things look, but I could probably put it at the back here somewhere or somewhere like that. I don't know, but I want to have it, that's for sure. So put that to the side for a minute just whilst we close this whole area here up. Right, so I've closed all the gaps now. I didn't show you the whole process because otherwise the video would be about half an hour long, but there shouldn't be any gaps that Pancho can get through. Now the fish will be able to get in and out as they please, as they already do, but that's fine. They tend to stay in the front anyway, to be honest. But right, I need to take most of these plants out in here because it's been used as a storage area, which is not good now that that one's clear. So let's get them across. It 
So that's the plants out, but you might notice that on the sand here, there's some sort of dark patches and there's a little hint of cyano there as well, but just in that one spot, which is a bit weird. Anyway, the dark patches are a sign that there's like free organics in the water column. This is usually caused when you haven't cleaned the filter out for a while and I've never cleaned the filter out. I'm pointing down there because there's a filter that feeds the water at the back there that obviously comes all the way through the system. But yeah, I've never cleaned the filter in this system at all. So it's probably best to do that today uh, as well as water top up. And then you, I can guarantee you in a few days, any dark patches you're seeing on, on the uh, substrate here, like, like that hint of gray, that's like the organics building up and it just shows on the sand. It's always a sign, clean your filter. So I'll get that clean and within a few weeks, no, not even weeks, it'll be a few days and that'll be gone. But first of all, I'm gonna top the water level of the tank up to where I want it to be, just so I can see where I'm at and then I can do some trimming and, um, and some further cleaning and whatnot then. Right, well that's made me very excited, I'm loving that. That's the highest the water level's ever been in here. It's about halfway now, and that's gonna give me loads more room for more fish, which is what I'm gonna do the next episode. Not this episode, because this is gonna be way too long otherwise. Look at that male, he's already acting really cool there. The one in the middle. Uh, I also need to clean out this filter. That one's not that little internal one. I've uh, not cleaned that for a long, long time. So yeah, let's get cleaning basically. Well, that's it guys, I think it's looking mint, which is English for like, really good. Uh, last thing to do is feed Pancho the bloodworm cube. I want you guys to see how like ferocious he is when he eats, it's really cool to watch. I was gonna give him some earthworms, but I've just got back late from a um, business trip and it's pitch black outside, so I can't find any. Um, so like, I like to vary the diet with blood, blood worms mainly, and then earthworms as well when I can find them or got time to, but yeah, we'll go with the the blood worms, let you guys see this up close. Yeah, you see what I mean? Proper attacks it, now, <laughs> now he's got a gob full and he just sits there for a bit and lets that sort of go down. But what's really good is like all the fish get a treat as well, the leftovers. And those snails are still going at it. That's enough, surely guys, crushed. Well, look at those um, pearl danios. Oh, not celestial pearls, they're just pearl danios. I think they're really nice. Why do I keep banging the camera? Yeah, there's another one. And then I've got the white clouds obviously as well. There's more than that, look, there's, there's the male coming. Um, there's another male over there actually. You can tell the males because they're a lot like sort of red, a lot more reds in them, flare a lot more. Females are a lot more rounded like that. 